It's a tricky one. You always get your hole in there. I'm just gonna get my stethoscope. Fijian crested iguanas are one of the rarest creatures in the world. So you have to make sure that each and every one of them is healthy and hopefully able to breed. But right now, the thing that's caused this guy to be off colour is a complete mystery. I'm at a bit of a loss to explain why he's shown the signs he is. Mm -hmm. I think probably the best thing to do right now is take an x-ray. Okay, x-ray. Wow, that's not what I expected. How you doing? Hey, good, it's how Alex, are you? Isn't it? Yeah, Alex. Chris, how are you? Nice to meet you. Come on through, mate. Chris is in Cairns helping out at the Marlin Coast Veterinary Hospital, and today his first patient is an unusual one. What is in the bag? Uh, it's a bit of a special lizard, a bit of a surprise for you. Um, they're quite an endangered species and we're part of a breeding program for them here at uh, Cairns Tropical Zoo. Okay. Well, I heard that Chris was in town, um, so I brought in something a little bit different, a little bit rare, uh, so I think Chris will be quite excited to see it. Wow. So this little guy here is a Fijian crested iguana. Yeah. I've been to Fiji a lot of times and these guys, I know they're in a lot of trouble, aren't they? They are, yeah. They, their population is quite low. They've only found on a couple of islands around the Fijian archipelago. Yeah. This little iguana has been named Aku after a Fijian sporting star. So what's what you're worried about him? Well, he, his appetite's gone down and he just hasn't been himself lately. So just not as energetic? Basically, yeah, not as energetic. Um, hasn't been eating as much as he normally would and yeah. Yeah, nowhere near as active as normal. It's a tricky one. Go and get your hole in there. I'm just gonna get my stethoscope. Fijian crested iguanas are one of the rarest creatures in the world. So you have to make sure that each and every one of them is healthy and hopefully able to breed. But right now, the thing that's caused this guy to be off colour is a complete mystery. It all sounds fine. Both heart and lungs, all normal. Look, the fact that he's not eating like he should mm -hmm. makes you think that it's got something to do with his digestive system. So, yeah. you know, if we can really focus our, our search around his abdomen here, I think he's, he feels a bit tense. You know, if anything, he, when I do push him there, he takes a little gulp and mm -hmm. then all of a sudden he isn't so active. So there's some discomfort coming in here. And certainly he's what we call guarding. He is, he's really trying to protect that, that belly of his. Yeah, yeah. He hasn't changed his diet at all? No. I'm at a bit of a loss to explain why he's shown the signs he is. Mm -hmm. I think probably the best thing to do right now is take an x-ray. Okay. If we do that, we'll get a good look, I guess, you know, inside that abdomen of his and just see if anything's bubbling away there. He's a cool iguana. I've been working with him for probably the last, uh, coming up to eight years now. So I've, I guess, grown up with him a little bit and, um, yeah, got a bit of an attachment to him. So it's concerning to hear there could be something wrong going on um, in his abdomen. So hopefully we can get to the bottom of it pretty quickly. X-ray. Wow, that's not what I expected. This isn't a digestive problem at all. This is something completely different. I take one look at Aku's x-rays and straight away, the weight lifts off the shoulders. It's there in plain sight. Aku has a bladder stone and a large one. But now comes a bigger concern. How do we get it out? That would hurt. There are a couple of ways that you can get a bladder stone. Certainly it can be a metabolic thing where you actually produce too many minerals and it starts to form a crystal and a really big one at that. Or it can be a dietary thing, or it can be the result of infection. But the reasons why don't really matter so much right now, do they? No. So that's got to go. They are an endangered species. There's not too many of them left, so each one is, is very precious to us. All right. How do we go? I've got some news that you're probably not going to expect. Mm -hmm. He's actually got a massive bladder stone. 
Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, right. So, I mean, it, I've never seen one of these before in an iguana. I mean, it, it is, we're talking, you know, that large. Really? Yeah. Wow. So, that would be the reason why he's been a bit off. Mm -hmm. He's carrying around probably about 30 grams of stone in his belly. Yeah, right. When I tell Alex, his face is one of slight confusion because he's not really sure whether he should be relieved or concerned. It's good news that it's not cancer, but at the same time, it's a worry, the fact that now, Aku is facing major surgery. So what's the next step, I guess? You can try to dissolve these stones, but it will take many months. I don't think that's really fair on him to put up with a stone for all that time. Yep. The best thing to do would be to operate. Actually go in there surgically and remove that stone. Okay. So that's right with you. We can do that today for you. That'd be great. Yeah. yeah. yeah I think the sooner it's done, the better, really. Yeah. Isn't it? When you have bladder stones this large, you're talking about quite significant pain and usually quite significant infections as well. So for those reasons, I don't really want to delay on this. It's important we get Aku into surgery straight away. Okay, old man. You come with me. in the world. An animal that is notoriously difficult under anaesthetic, an animal that is quite old, and an animal that has quite a significant medical problem. Yeah, you can understand why right now I'm a bit concerned. The plan really is to cut down through the skin, through the abdominal wall, and my thinking is straight after that, I should find what I'm looking for. All right, I'm now pretty happy with this opening incision. This isn't a situation where I have to go searching for what I'm looking for because it's right there. That bladder stone is just dominating Aku's abdomen there. If there's any doubt as to whether that's it or not, that settles it. It's not called a bladder stone for nothing. It is rock hard and it is made of one big lump of crystal. It's heavy and you just know it'll hurt like hell. For all those reasons, this lump has to come out now. So believe it or not, that is the bladder, but the bladder is totally full. Full to the brim with rock. It's just all bladder stone. The challenge now is to get the stone out safely. So my hope is I can actually pull this bladder out and get it on the outside of the body. And maybe a dream. It's not really playing ball. So with any luck, if I can get these in the right place, we might just have some action here. It is egg shaped, so I'm just trying to roll it over so I get the narrowest part. I squeeze it out. There we go. There it is. One big stone. Massive. <laughs> Extraordinary. Living with that just had to be a nightmare. It's essentially made of minerals like calcium and phosphorus and magnesium and they all bond together and form this rock. You can't imagine the pain and discomfort that Aku has been experiencing up until this point. If Alex hadn't picked up on those subtle signs that Aku was showing, then his life would have continued to be absolute torture. Alright, let's give this a big flush. The worry we have is that because that bladder has been opened and we know that bladder is full of bacteria because it's had the big stone in it, the concern is we can now spread that bacteria into Aku's abdominal cavity. Any more? 
No, that's good to start with. Now Chris can start stitching up Aku's bladder. This is really, really finicky. Everything has now shrunk down to that stone's gone, so it's absolutely microsurgery. That's the bladder now. I'm happy with how that's looking. Finally, Chris can close up the wound. This is just some antibiotics. And just provide a bit of an extra, extra barrier to any infection taking hold. Okay, my Fijian friend is done, so it's time to wake him up. Chris Tom, he's the same iguana, isn't he? Yes. <laughs> he looks very different. <laughs> Change colour, buddy. What was that all about? What he's done is, because he's been on his back and under anaesthetic and getting cold, he's decided that if he darkens himself up, makes himself black, then he absorbs more heat. It's just one of those incredible adaptations these guys have. Okay, buddy. You ready? Here we go. Oh, no, you can't leave yet. No. no, you really can't. I know, I know you think you're ready, and I appreciate that, but you're not. So let's just take it slow. You would never know that this little guy has just experienced major abdominal surgery. He's up, ready, and keen to get moving. It is unbelievable. You are fiery, aren't you? Alex is going to be here soon, so if you put on this sort of display, we'll be very impressed. But for now, just rest, huh? Hey, mate, how are you? Not too bad, how did you go? Good, yeah, it's been quite a day yep. for everyone. But he, <laughs> look, he's just taken the no frills approach to it. He's unmoved, but you can see that's where we weren't in. Oh, yep, yep. Just in there. Three hours later, it's time for Aku to go home. He should recover pretty quickly. Mm. That area tends to heal up beautifully. Okay, so awesome. After a few days, you should start to see that appetite of his returning. He should be a lot brighter than he was before. Yeah, great. He doesn't have that big rock yeah. sitting. Be a lot more comfortable for him. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Okay, but look, he's bounced back incredibly well after the anesthetic. Yeah, awesome. Uh, couldn't have gone any better then. Yeah. yeah. It's great to hear that the surgery went well and the bladder stone was removed successfully and who knows, maybe he might be interested in breeding now because he is an endangered species, so each and every one of them is very important. Let us know how he goes, mate. Yeah, will do. If he starts fathering some, we should know about it. Yeah, thanks so much. Okay, no worries, buddy. I'll put him back in here. It's a special day when, as a vet, you get to treat an animal that hopefully is one of the cornerstones of preserving an entire species. But today has been that day. Aku had a unique problem, but thankfully a problem we're able to fix. And hopefully now, the rest of his life involves producing many more Akus. Come on, girlfriend. Up on the Gold Coast at the Animal Emergency Service, Marie has arrived with her heavily pregnant golden retriever, Greta. Good girl. Come on. Greta is fun-loving. She is the light of my life. So I'm coming in today to get Alex to have a look. Here she is. Hey, Good Greta. Girl. She's looking ready. Very pregnant. Isn't she? <laughs> For emergency specialist Dr Alex Hines, Cases like this are why she wanted to become a vet in the first place. I love my work and I love what I do. This is more than a job. This is my way of making a difference in the world. I think for me, because I'd been around animals all of my life, it was a decision fairly early on that I wanted to work with animals. You're looking wonderful, aren't you? Glowing, I think, would be the way you put it. Aww. Alex needs to determine exactly how many puppies they could be dealing with. All ready to pop those pups out? I wonder how many you've got in there. When dogs have puppies, there are a number of things that can go wrong, which is why we do x-ray and ultrasound. Come on, let's go. 
Good girl. My dog's not going up there unless the table's clean. <laughs> what are you it has doing? to be clean for my girl to get up there. Marie isn't just a client. She also works with Alex. She's the kennel attendant in our hospital, which means she pretty much cleans this whole place. All done. We call her Nana Marie because she really is like our Nana. Hey, Greta. How are you doing? Gerardo is my life partner, but he's also my partner in the hospital. Greta, come over here. Oh, Greta. And he's very helpful when it comes to heavy lifting. Oh, oh big girl. Job. Good girl. So how many puppies do you think she's got in there, Marie? I think around about 10. I'm going to go with 12. You're going with 12? Yeah. We'll see. Jeez. Let's see. Eight. Eight, 10, 12. It's always a bit of a guessing game as to how many puppies are in there. You ready, sweetie? I'm just going to roll you over, Greta. Good girl, good girl. There you go. That's my girl. Ready, team? I think we've pretty much got all of her in. OK, I'll press the button. One, two, three. Find out if I'm the winner. Look at that. Whoa. Look at them all. Wow. There's a lot of babies. Look how crowded there. they are. There's yeah. not room for all. They must be fighting for space. With the X-ray showing multiple puppies overlapping, Alex is concerned some might not be getting enough oxygen or could be crushed. When you've got that many puppies that are all jammed inside a confined space, there's a lot of things that could go wrong. Literally filling all of her belly there. Here we go. One, two, three. We've taken the x-rays and guess what? 10, 11. Really? 12. 12. There's 12 puppies in there. All right, let's take her through. We know we're there. Any pregnancy comes with its set of risks. She's got 12 puppies that she needs to push out, and she may just become exhausted and not be able to deliver all those puppies herself. If at any stage we feel like she's in trouble, then we would have to discuss about whether we would need to take her to surgery to do a caesarean. The health of each pup is also critical, so Alex must now perform a vital examination. Ultrasound will allow us to see how healthy the puppies are. So we'll be looking for the heart rates of the puppies and that'll help to tell us whether they're in any distress or not. So there's the heart beating. The heart rate for this particular puppy is 185 beats a minute. It's a perfect little puppy heart. It is crowded in there, isn't it? I don't think anyone wants to be that close to their brothers and sisters. <laughs> so is it possible because there's so many puppies crammed in there that we could be coming into some trouble? That is possible. When you have that many puppies in there all fighting for nutrition and, and blood supply, it can mean that some of them are not getting the nutrient supply that they need. Because if some of them are in distress, it does happen sometimes that we'll have to get in there and get them out quicker, do a caesarean if we have to. You do what's necessary. The heart rate for this particular puppy is normal. All the puppies' heartbeats that I've seen so far look fine. What we have here is little puppy's heart, and the heart's beating nicely. Marie, these tests help us to give us more information, but really, we're not going to know how things are going to go until it actually comes time for her to deliver. OK. Now, we can't possibly see all of the puppies on ultrasound, but the ones we can see look healthy, and that's really good news. So everything so far is looking good. Perfect. Thank you very much. But the news is bittersweet for owner Marie. Hi, Dan, darling. This is where I have to totally rely on, on you, Alex, because... I'm not going to be here, I don't think. I have to fly over to New Zealand, my mum's. Dying. So I fly out tomorrow morning. I'm staying there until she passes away, which is probably going to be within the next 48 hours. So I totally have to rely on you, Alex. And she'll be a bit well looked after with my friend Judith, who's flying over from New Zealand to look after her for me. You take care of your mum? Yep. Judith and I can look after Greta. Obviously, we're going to let you know how we're going every day. Um, and when it's time for her to have the pups, we'll be there with her. Yep. I feel like I'm letting Greta down, but I'm not, because I know that you're going to be there, so... OK. 
broken girl. It breaks my heart to leave her, but it would break my heart more if I wasn't with my mum. The most important thing now is for you to be with your mum. Yeah, my mum was diagnosed a few weeks ago with terminal cancer, and there is not much hope of her lasting until the weekend. Marie, you know we're going to look, take really good care of her and look after her. Thanks, mate. <laughs> If Greta can just hold on till Tuesday, I'd be the happiest person in the world. But if she can't, she's in really good hands. I trust her with you. We could really start to see Greta deliver these puppies at any moment. And so I'm going to be there for her in every way that I can. You try and wait. Me? Good girl. The moment is finally here. After a long wait, Greta is in labour. Good girl. You're doing so well, Greta. And she's already delivered five of her 12 puppies. She just got into it and knew what to do, and off she went. Sadly, owner Marie is in New Zealand to be with her terminally ill mother. So daughter Melanie and friend Judith have been on puppy watch. A little stressful. But me and Judith have been a good team, so it's been good. But with so many puppies expected through the night, they've called in vets Alex and Gerardo for much needed help. When I got the phone call, I turned to G and said, I promised Marie that I would be there, so let's go. Hello? Hello! Oh my goodness, it's all happening! <laughs> Hello! Sure wow. is. How many have we got so far? Three boys and two girls. Wonderful. Marie is going to be so excited. Are you cleaning your puppies already, Greta? Oh, she's just been amazing. She's just acing this. The licking that she does will encourage them to take breaths. Although Greta's doing an incredible job helping her puppies to breathe... And oh, then, and they've got some pushing there. ..she's feeling the strain of delivering such a big litter. And puppy number five is struggling. Yeah, this one's a bit blue, hey? Yeah, he's a bit quiet, that one. Yeah, let me rub him before a bit. Yeah. She's a first-time mum. She's got a lot of puppies. There's a lot of things that could go wrong. <laughs> yeah, when they're born, their lungs are filled with fluid, so they have to quickly get rid of that fluid to try to then get air in their lungs. That's probably the reason why Mr Blue looks a little bit blue. A little bit blue, he actually. He looks a little bit blue. <laughs> Gerardo's vigorous rubbing works. It's better. Yeah, and I, I think there's another one on the way. Here we go, we've got a puppy. Puppy, good yeah. towel. Come on, push little darling. Oh, with good girl Greta. Puppy number six arrives and it's a little boy. So this little pup's still got the placenta attached, but we're just gonna let Greta have a good lick there. That's it. Suddenly, there's another surprise arrival. Owner Marie calling from New Zealand. Hey Marie! We got six bundles of joy for you, Nana. You're doing a wonderful job. Greta gets all the credit. She's, she's doing all the hard work here. And I think there's another one on the way very shortly. Oh, yep, here we go. We got another one. Here we go. Yay! Wow. Marie has just been to her mother's funeral today. This would have to be one of the saddest days of Marie's life. But seeing these puppies being delivered, I think it's quite healing. Gosh, that one caught me completely by surprise. <laughs> An emotional Marie is overjoyed to witness the arrival of three more puppies. She doesn't seem to be having any problem at all. She's been great. But no one can relax just yet as a tenth puppy okay. arrives. I was going to give that to you. Up there. Okay. Okay. This tiny that. puppy is in trouble. Very lively. lively. Come on, sweetheart. I delivered the tenth pup and I just know there's something wrong. Come on, breathe. Come on, little one. Hey, breathe. Hey. I just hope there's something we can do to bring this pup through. Come on, sweetheart. Come on. Greta, we are trying, honey. Come on. Come on, beautiful boy. Come on. The puppy's heartbeat is faint and it's not breathing. I really want to be able to save this little girl. I'm also aware that Marie's on, she's watching all of this. And I can only wonder what she must be going through at the moment. 
Is it not responding? No. no. So we've been doing this for a while. Yeah. G and Judith are working on this little pup, but I know from G's face that he's really not getting any response. It's no movement at all. We've lost the fight for this little girl. Sorry. We've lost one, Mary. I'm sorry. We're all devastated, but we've got to get back to Greta because she's still got more puppies to deliver. Good girl. And she's going to need all the support she can get. Oh, that was a big push, that one. She's looking really tired, eh? I think she's given it everything to this point. Greta, you're a good girl, darling. This one's coming backwards. It's puppy number 11. Oh, that's the whole thing. No, there's not much movement. Come up, come up. All right, Droid, I'm going to hand this one to you. Ready? One, yep. two. Yep. You got enough? Yep. Oh, come on. Come on, hey. We've got a light one. Yay. Hey. Listen to that, Dina. Yeah. Can you hear that, Marie? Yeah, I can. He has a lot of strength in this one. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what a great noise that is, hey? That's a relief to hear that. Nice pink little nose. Means she's taking lots of oxygen into her nice dry lungs, hey? I think there's one more on the way, and I. We just need her to get this last one out. Here we go. Come on. Yeah, he's moving. He's moving, Marie. Lucky last. Pretty big for the last one. Six. It's a boy. <laughs> hey, that's your last baby. Good girl, Greta. The last puppies arrived. That's that little one going. Yes. Hey? And they look great. They're in good health. Greta, she looks tired. We're all pretty tired, actually. Very proud of Greta. She's a good mummy. You've done an awesome job, Alex and Gerardo. Mm -hmm. And Judith and Mouse. Thank you so much. I think we've all done a fantastic job, but the credit has to go to Greta. 11 of Greta's puppies have made it, but they'll have to be closely monitored over the next few critical days to make sure they're healthy. You just come home safely, Nana, and your extended family will be waiting for you when you get here. <laughs> it's a big family. It sure is. You're going to be one busy Nana. Marie is now back from New Zealand and has her hands full helping Greta with her thriving family. Good babies. And they're about to get some very excited visitors. I'm really looking forward to seeing those puppies, honey. Yeah. Hello! <laughs> Alex and Gerardo are keen to see how the newly expanded family is doing. Oh, my goodness. Is that not the cutest thing? Gosh, she's so attentive, isn't she? She's doing a really good job. Greta looks fantastic. She's obviously loving her new mum life. She's looking after them. She's in there making sure they're OK. She just looks like she's born to do this. It's more like puppies. One of the things we wanted to do today was actually do a little health check on the pups, but once you see them walking around in a little crate, crawling around, making puppy sounds and suckling healthily, there's, there's nothing we needed to do. They just looked amazing. Now that your eyes are open, there's no stopping you guys, I'm sure. I've seen lots of puppies born before, but these guys, this is really special because Marie's part of our family at the hospital and because I was part of bringing them into the world and seeing them now, it's a special moment. Oh, what a good boy. Hi guys. Hey. Who's this handsome fella? This is Lenny. At the Richmond practice, Scott's junior vet Laura and nurse Nathan are prepping a border collie puppy for an emergency procedure. He looks pretty healthy, so what's the problem? So Lenny is a very healthy six month old border collie. He was on a walk with his owners this morning and swallowed a ball, whole, no chewing. And the owner was keen to... Turn him one. So <laughs> the owner said it was slightly bigger than a golf ball, slightly smaller than a tennis ball. So we're not expecting that's going to be something that's going to pass through very easily on its own. 
Border Collies really are a fantastic dog. They're known to be the smartest breed of dog. Lenny, maybe not top of the class. And also the concern is, is if we tried to make it come up, would it actually come up? Because it seems like that sounds pretty sizable, yeah. right? You numpty. <laughs> what, why would you do that? His mum saw what she thinks she saw. Is she really confident that he She's did swallow it? She's sure that it was in his mouth and it, it went down hole. Um, it was a plastic hollow ball with a squeaker inside. <laughs> Shall I see if I can make your tummy squeak? But laughs aside, Lenny's predicament is potentially very dangerous. There's something quite solid there. Can you feel it? So yeah. It feels a bit solid at one end and then tapers a little bit. There simply is no way that I can leave that ball where it is. Unfortunately, if it's past the stomach, we're just not going to be able to remove it with the scope. It will irritate the stomach as it rolls and rolls around. But if the worst case scenario occurs and it passes into the small intestine, it can actually kill off that structure, leading to excruciating pain, infection and death. What started out as a fun day for the young pup has now become a scary situation. Normally when dogs swallow silly things, we just make them vomit and they bring it back up. In this case, the ball is so big that there's just simply no way that it will find its way back up the esophagus and out the mouth. Let's get him in this task, good boy. Okay, you're a good boy. So, as much as I'd love to say, yes, we can make Lenny vomit, and out will come this ball, it just simply won't happen. To confirm the ball is still in Lenny's stomach, Scott starts by taking an X-ray. So now that Lenny is anaesthetised, we are doing the most basic of imaging, which is X-ray. So just to see, can we see something present in his stomach or gastrointestinal tract? X-ray. Come and have a look at this. So. Oh wow, it's pretty mm. obvious. Yeah. Big ball. You don't need to be a vet to look at Lenny's x-ray and diagnose it. You look at it and go, that's a ball inside a dog. And that's exactly what it is. A huge ball. How the hell did he swallow that? Hole, can, down in one. Can you imagine? Uh, well, that's like trying to swallow a, a whole apple. Like, how did he do it? All right, let's try and get it out. The next step is for us to use a endoscope to put a camera down the gastrointestinal tract and have a look at this thing. And I think all we can do is try and see if we can pull it out. Oh, there we go. What's that there? There we are. There's our ball. But while the ball is clearly visible on the endoscope, getting hold of it is another matter. There is going to be a serious disparity between the size of the ball and the size of my grabbers. Go for it, yeah. Yeah, go for it, really go for it, yeah. Nah, it's going to slide off every time. Go ahead, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. It is so excruciating to see something and not be able to grab hold of it. Are you getting any traction on no, it? No, no, no my grabbers just keep sliding off it and sliding off it and every time I'm getting more frustrated because I know if I can't grab hold of it I'll need to go in and perform surgery. Push right against it. Go, go, go. Get, get, get. Ah. God, that's so infuriating. But look, even if we did grab it, I'm just not convinced it will come out anyway. It's just so big. Yeah, it's a shame. I can see it but I can't do anything about it except go in for surgery. Despite everyone's best efforts, the ball cannot be retrieved. Surgery is now the only option to remove it, but it's not without risk. It is a big thing because we are opening up a dog's body cavity and then we're opening up the stomach, which is full of bacteria and, and enzymes, and we have to retrieve something from it. There's blood vessels everywhere. So yes, there's, there's a lot of potential downfalls of doing something like this but it literally is the only thing we could do to get this ball out. Anxiously waiting upstairs for news are Lenny's owner Catherine and her son Finn. It was there one minute 
and then it was gone and I said to my husband, he swallowed it. Even when I brought him in, he thought, did I, did I imagine that? But no, it turns out he really did swallow it. And when you told me, you got quite emotional and it actually made me quite emotional as well. We've had him since he was two months. It was lockdown gave us the opportunity, being home more than we ever were. Um, so it gave us that, so that's the one good thing that's come out of COVID and lockdown for us. And there it is. Grab hold of it. It's gigantic. It looks even bigger in, in like reality, doesn't mm. it? This puppy has just done a classic puppy thing of swallowing something silly that uh, was unable to go up or down. In the future, I'd love to say that Lenny will learn from this, but he really, really won't. He won't remember this at all. And all his owners can do is, is do their best to ensure that anything that he plays with is too big for his mouth. But in this case, it has to be gigantic. <laughs> That was gigantic. Hi guys. <laughs> Two hours later, and the sheepish puppy can now be returned to his family. I would say it's relatable to us trying to swallow a volleyball. It's so big. For the size of his mouth and his head to the yeah. size of the ball, it's yeah. unbelievable. <laughs> Here it is. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That wasn't the colour it was when it went in. Oh, is that right? <laughs> it was a, little, a little bit bluer. <laughs> yeah. It's not even ours. You, not even. You pinched it. Right. <laughs> I've seen some dogs swallow some ridiculous things from rocks to 13 sweaty football socks, but this really is quite incredible because I just don't know how Lenny did it. I mean, it's, it's quite the party trick. He will mature, he will get that, you know, emotional intelligence in time, mm -hmm. but he just can't be trusted. No. no. <laughs> Silly. <laughs> hey mate, even though you're a very good boy, oh. and you're going to bounce back and you'll be fine. Yes, you will. Yes. He's such a nice dog, he is. isn't he? So we forgive him. <laughs> just this one. Don't do it Yeah. Again. yeah. Okay. See you later. Goodbye. No more eating stupid things, okay? <laughs> All right. Thanks ever so much. Bye guys. Thank you. Good to see you. Bye Thanks. beautiful boy. Bye bye. See you later. Thank you. Hi. Hello buddy. How are you? One month later and Scott's checking up on not so little Lenny to see if he's learned his lesson. So how's he been? He's been great. Really yeah. great. Yeah, bounced back really quickly. The last time I saw Lenny, he was heading home after a fairly massive surgery that we had to perform on a relatively small puppy. But it is so lovely to see him running around in his almost natural environment and herding my fluffy dogs as he goes. Oh, look at you two. Oh, oh, so fun. It was really delightful to see Catherine. She's so relaxed. She clearly loves her dog and she seems incredibly grateful that he is healthy and happy and enjoying his life again in the park. At the Bondi Referral Hospital Sash, Joseph and Judy are in damage control after a freak accident at home. Their 11-year-old daughter Rose has fallen on their puppy and appears to have broken his leg. She was very upset, really teary and just basically devastated and she kept on saying to me it's an accident, it's, it's an accident. Oh little man. Oh. Without even putting much pressure on that, I can feel some crunching there. So he's got a big fracture. I think that's broken in half. Adorable. Think of a little lamb. So Emergency tiny. vet Lisa Chimes will now take x-rays, but she's almost certain they'll confirm Pip has suffered a shocking fracture. He's in a good place, sweetie. Do not worry. Consumed with guilt, Judy's daughter Rose is calling to find out 
just how badly she's hurt her puppy. And I'll let you know exactly what they're going to be doing to him. You just say a prayer for Pip. He'll be fine. Wow. That is a serious break. Unfortunately, the X-ray results are going to make Rose feel even worse. The two fragments of bone are just sitting at right angles to each other where they should be straight. So the only way that's going to get better is with surgery. Pip is a 13-week-old puppy. He's full of life normally, and this life has been snapped out of him with this break. It's just awful. Here's the little boy. Look after him. I will. Oh, so tiny. Hi, baby. At SASH, it's now time for surgery to try to save 13-week-old Pip's shattered leg. And there's a sleep. The toy poodle's femur was snapped in half after his 11-year-old owner, Rose, accidentally fell on him. Pip's got a, quite a nasty fracture of his thigh bone um, and it's just cracked straight in two. So we're going to put a plate and some screws in there to get it together and get it stable. Surgery on the tiny puppy will need to be precise and quick. With a little bloke like this, we don't want them on the table for too long because even with all the heating that we provide, they can get really cold and we can have all sorts of anaesthetic complications if they do that. So we've just got to be in and out. Pip's bones are just so small. I mean, they'd be six millimetres wide and I'm trying to get a two millimetre screw into the bone. So there's not a lot of room for error. Because Pip's only 13 weeks old, he's still growing and as a result I'm going to have to compromise a little bit on how many screws I can put in the bone because if I put too many in I'll go across one of his growth plates and that'll stun his growth. How about that? You're going to go home soon. This is one day after surgery and he's walking. The leg is fixed. Pip has made an amazing recovery after his leg was snapped in half. After just 24 hours, the toy poodle can now go home with his family. Your family's excited to see you. Yes, they are. Yeah. Yeah. It was 11-year-old Rose who fell on her puppy. After blaming herself, seeing Pip again is a huge relief. <laughs> We've got to be very gentle when you hold him. Poor Rose missed Pip so much and when I brought him into the room, the look on her face just priceless. And I know she is just going to look after him from now on. Hi, I'm Dr Danny Busek. If you love our show and want to see more amazing stories from the Bondi Vet team, just hit the subscribe button. Click that little notification bell and we'll see you for our next video.